Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healing Art After Hours, where I upload videos of live Zoom creative workshops from my Healing Art Happy Hour meetups. I'm Shauna Robeson from Creating Space Coastal, and in today's video, I will con be continuing to explore fun creative projects inspired by Neurographica. Handouts for the introduction to this topic are available for download at my shop at creatingspacecoastal.com. And as always, happy creating. But for tonight, we're still on Neurographica or Neurographic Art, um, or I should say art inspired by Neurographica. And tonight we're gonna work on doing something like this guy. So I'm gonna start, get going on that, starting with the tree. So, or actually it's, it's not a tree. It is, oh, I did work on, I don't know if I posted what I worked on. I don't think I did. So my apologies for not posting last week's things. There's, let's see. Oh no, that's the first eye I did. I might have to cut all this more. Okay, so I worked on the eye a little more and I will post it, but I apologize. I didn't post it yet. And then I did, This book, I don't have things in order. So, and then there's my jellyfish finish. So played around with that a little bit. So I will post those pictures on last week's date. I was out, I, anytime I cross the border in a week, I always am kind of discombobulated because I get behind a little bit. So, so that's what happened there. Okay, let's get started on a clean page. So I'm just going to start with the, I'm using the extra fine Sharpie. And again, if you're doing any wet media from last time, we had a little bit of a lesson that I didn't think to bring up, but I'm going to bring it up this time, is if you are going to be doing any kind of water or wet medium for coloring, make sure if you don't want any smudging or smearing of the ink to use indelible ink or permanent ink. So do a little test. Uh, color with it, let it dry, and then do a little wet on it and see if it smears. Because um, some people were frustrated that they did some, you know, they did a lot of work and then they went to color it and then started smearing. So I just want to give that little cautionary tale. But in this case, I'm just going to make, I, I know it's going to be kind of hourglass shaped. And I'm going to start with the, cir the circular, the eggs, I guess. This is kind of a nest. So I'm just going to make a variety of different size and different, even different shape. They can be kind of oblong. It doesn't really matter in random spots. In relatively a, an hourglass shape. So you can draw with a pencil if you want, if you just want to keep in kind of a certain shape, you could do that. I think I need this marker is getting dried up, so let me try this one. Yeah, that's much better. That marker was getting kind of dried out. Now I can always add some more later. In this case, because everything is kind of overlapping and intertwined, it doesn't matter which is on top and which is on the bottom. But I, uh, I have kind of an idea where I want to intertwine the, the, my lines with the circles. So that's why I want them there first, because I actually want to follow kind of use them as a guide when I'm drawing. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and then I'm just going to connect the dots, so to speak. Like I'm just gonna go and touch the circles as I go along, kind of like on the end, it can be anywhere. And it doesn't matter which ones. And I'm just gonna do continue to do that. You don't have to have every single circle connected in there, but I want 
I want to wind these lines through these through these dots or the circles that I have in there. I should say not dots. And I really want to keep this section narrow. So I want to be careful not to get too wide here. And you can always go start anywhere. You don't have to start at the bottom. So if I wanted to branch out from here, I could. I could start another line. Let's say I don't want it to get too heavy in that center area. Instead of running a line all the way from the bottom through the center every single time, because this gets really full of lines, I can just branch off the lines that are existing up here. And same thing for down below. So just keep that in mind and then just let yourself play. I can even just add a little section if I want to. I don't know if you saw that, but I'm just creating like a little bubble within that thread. Show it down here. So you can just, you know, add a little bit of a thread anywhere you want. No hard, fast rules. I like when these lines kind of wrap around each other. So you're imagining all of these eggs, if you will, in this case, are being held together with these filaments to create this nest. So these little filaments that are going around them are holding them in to the structure. So you do wanna make sure that you're at least is somehow attaching each of these eggs to the main. I mean, if you're doing this, you can do a course with it. Okay. And then if you, after you draw your lines, you can even add more Maybe you see a place you want another circle. Maybe there's a natural spot that looks like it should be something there. You can just add it wherever you think it should be. Okay. And then, of course, with the neurographica, there's the filling in those intersections, turning in from these to use, softening. Now, that's going to take a long time. So, I'm going to do a little bit, but then I'm not going to do the whole thing because our little dragon guy is going to take a while. So, 
I want to give plenty of time so I don't have to rush through that. So I'm just going to sh show just because I know some of you might be coming in a little newer. So just for a little refresher, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. So just wherever there's a sharp, an intersection, there's a little bit of a X created. So on each side, there's a V and then there's these wider V's on the sides. And you just soften those up. And you're just cleaning up. You can clean up some rough edges. Maybe you missed a little connection there. That's okay. Just make a thicker line. And that's that, just really zen. I, I mean, that's the part that, just get lost in it. I listen to, I'll listen to an audiobook sometimes while I'm doing it. The idea is not to multitask while you're doing it, but I like to have some, I do. <laughs> I mean, not if I'm really doing the full on algorithm where I'm thinking about the, the issue, but when I'm just creating this kind of art, inspired art, I listen to music or audiobook or something. And I could just do this for a long time. So, okay. So I'm gonna just pause there and I'm gonna continue that throughout my, my nest. So let's get to our little, our little dragon. Now, I kind of wish I had up on a page I could look at. Maybe I have to cut him out of this book because I want you guys to be able to see where we're going to in case you wanna go ahead. So let me just, I know where he went. I think I'm gonna go ahead and take him out of the book. That'd be easier. Now, like uh, before, when I first started it, it was going to be an alien, and then he became a little 
kind of dragon, like a bat dragon. <laughs> so it's fun when that happens, when you have kind of an idea and you start and then it evolves to something else. So, so I'm gonna just basically follow his template a little bit, but I always like to use a pencil, especially if I'm drawing something and I don't know where I'm going with it yet because I want to be able to erase as I go. So, okay. so these, his little ears are just little upside down V's. And just remember, whatever you do in pencil, you can always erase. So you can play around with different styles. And I do encourage you, you don't have to follow along with what I'm doing. You can create your own guy. And I'm using basically the base of where the this ear meets the head, kind of, kind of gauge where my eyes are. You just use landmarks on to get a rough estimate. And then you can always look at it and go, no, something's not right. And you can adjust it with the at the final step you erase I kind of have He's going to be his, he's a little chunkier version. That's okay. <laughs> it's his cousin or his, her cousin. I don't know. Actually, it's the guy who's already in the nest, I'm going to say. And then as I go behind the nest, I imagine, and you can even write, you can even draw this in. Like if you just wanna draw the rest of the wing, and then you can say, okay, it's coming out, out here. So that way, if in this case, this is narrower, so now the wing can, the wing can kinda of come out this way. So with the pencil, you can draw wherever it is you want it to be and see, exactly how it's going to show up on the other side of an obs of an obstacle that's in the way. So that's a nice thing about pencil.
And I'm just imagining these fingers. Now, what I did was since there's already marker here, I can't really go on top of that unless I use something that's opaque and can cover that. So that's what I did here is I went on top and I just used the gel pens with the kind of the metallic and I was able to go over the top and hide the pattern underneath. So because I didn't have him drawn first, so I'm just gonna do that over the top. Bring his body down. Oh, this is kind of dead. Okay. And then over here, yeah, and this one, this one did the wingspan didn't go all the way across, but in this one, I am going to make it come out here. A little bit. Okay, and then I'm going to put this other hand kind of here, roughly there. So none of this will be visible, but I just drew it so I got an idea of the, the appropriate anatomy, if that makes sense just to help me see the, where it's going. All right. And then a lot of the shape and the, and the shading helps with the dimensions. So that'll happen in the coloring part of it. But for now, We're just getting his body in there. Okay. And then I imagine that he's got another, he's, he's got the arms that are part of the wings and then he's got some legs on the bottom. So I'm putting one of his, all I'm doing is these little ovals for his foot. And I'm going to just put the one because he's kind of angled this way. So I'm going to imagine that his body comes down this way. So I'm going to just say his bottom foot is maybe down behind. So you don't see that one. And then I do want to get his little 
his tail coming up. So his body is kind of coming around, let's see, this way. A little bit lower. Don't want to interfere with my element of, of the wing. So I'm going to see if I can bring it down further, actually. Maybe I'll just have it. So I'm running down his body. I'm just making him really long. So I'm just going to have it come down and curl. It's just a curl. There. Then that way it's not too close to the to the wing. Yeah, it's still I can kind of see how his body, you know, comes down here and is long like that. So I think that works. I think that'll work. Okay. So everything that's inside that's not going to be actually drawn at this point. I'm going to erase because I don't want to accidentally draw hard draw it in with a marker. So I just used the pencil across behind just so I could see where it was going, but I don't actually want to keep that there. So I'm going to go ahead and erase that before because my next step is going to be to use a marker to go ahead and commit to those lines. Now his his little claws are going to stay. So I'm going to leave those but I'm just getting rid of all of these guidelines that are that are behind the, that I know his body is behind the nest there. That makes sense. I don't, they, they served a purpose, but now they don't. So get them out of the way. Because what, how, what I've done before when I haven't done that is I've actually accidentally finished the line and then I, and then I can't get rid of it. So you don't wanna do that. <laughs> Cautionary tale. Okay. Sean, I just kind of came in a little bit late. What are the two things on the far right? You got two different tails. Are those different tails or? Okay. So is this is his wings. Oh, okay. It's wings. Here, let me let me get him closer. So he basically let me show you the guide. So he's got he's kind of like a winged bat dragon. Okay. So on this one, he, his wing didn't go across because this was wider, but mm -hmm. this is a narrow, narrower spot. I went ahead and brought his wing across here. Okay, this is other way. And this gotcha. is his tail. Okay, I got his tail. Got it? Okay. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Bring it up a little bit. I know I left my Halloween party to come and be with you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and look at you're in costume. Yeah. I think, I think from I'm seeing a small picture. So yeah. Fla is it a flower child or? Well, I, it's Renaissance costume. Oh, fun, fun. So yeah, so there's a little close up of, of him just in pencil. And now I'm gonna go ahead and check it out and see if there's anything that I want to change before I start penciling and committing to this design. I think I'm gonna change his mouth a little. I don't know if I like his mouth. And you almost had a happy mouth there. Well, it's a, it's the, you know, it's the um, nest. So maybe he's happy about his babies, but. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's kind of. I don't know. I don't know. I never really liked the mouth. I struggled with that. So I'm gonna play around with different mouth shapes. Maybe I just want a kind of more rectangular mouth. I kind of want it. I want there to be sort of a grin, but I want it to be like more menacing, like. <laughs> don't mess with my babies 
but I'm not achieving that, so. Hmm. But that's what I would do. I would just go, you know, I don't really like that. Let me see if I can play with it. And get something that I'm more happy with. So clearly I'm not a pro on menacing mouse. <laughs> I kind of want it to be like, that seems a little more menacing. Once I add the teeth. Well, he's going to be smiling, sorry. <laughs> but I like that mouth better. I like that mouth shape better. I don't even know if you can see that. So I just kind of changed up this mouth a little bit. And I can wait on pen, putting that into pen to marker if, if I'm not sure, you know. I'm not committed, I just can wait and think about it. So, all right. All right, and then I take my marker and I just follow the lines of the pencil. And I, you know, I did a lot of drawing before, before, um, and I don't know why it never occurred to me to do it like this. Like, if I wanted it to be in pen, I always wanted to draw it in pen. And I'm trying to think of when I got the idea of, I think it was like a, maybe a Zen tangle or something, but it was, it, or maybe it was mandala, but I thought, oh, I can pencil it first and then do it in marker when I know that's exactly what I want. So, but it didn't occur to me for a long time, which is embarrassing to say, but for those of you who maybe have the same thing where it's like, oh, yeah, you can just pencil it. You can also, if you're not sure, you know, you can just lightly marker it. Like if you don't want, you don't have to have heavy lines everywhere. You can kind of do lighter lines if you just want the guide, but you don't want those lines to be there in the final prod product. So, because this is kind of a thick marker. I think actually I'm gonna, Switch out because it's a little bit thick for what I want. I just want these to be guidelines. I don't necessarily want them to be so powerful in the final piece. And just remember the pencil's a guide. So you don't have to follow it exactly. So don't feel like if you go off, 
the line a little bit, you have to try to fix that. Just keep going. And the only thing that's going to be left is the marker. So sometimes if, if you, you know, don't go to the line, you want to stop and go, oh, I got to correct that. But just keep going and let that be the new line and then go back towards where you want to be. And it'll look better than if you stop and try to. follow the line exactly. You just want it to be a guide. All right, and then once you've gotten all your marker lines in, you can go in and erase all those pencil guidelines that you don't need anymore. this little brush and I actually I have another one that's that was like for I think for shoe or like wiping dust off of shoes works fine too but just some kind of brush this is actually for this is by Settler but something to when you're doing a lot of drawing to be able to take the all the erasing shavings off. So I have this little tray that I keep handy because then they get on your workspace or on your project and they can kind of make a mess and then sometimes they can get in your way when you're actually trying to do something, you're trying to draw something and then you you hit one of them, maybe it's sitting on your, and it's a little better than your hands because your hands might have grease or color or something on them. So using a brush or something like that can help a little bit with not inadvertently putting oils and, and color that you don't want. If you have happen to have, you know, some markers on your hand or something like that. 
whatever art project you were working on earlier. <laughs> so it's a little tough. Okay, and then there's my little my little guy. What are we doing on time? It's eight o'clock. So I think um oh no, I got do the tail. Yeah, so, so there's his cousin. It's Tom and Jerry. <laughs> and uh, we'll get, like I said, we'll get the coloring, but I, I use a lot of the, the colors to add the shading and the depth. So we'll talk about that, like I said, in coloring. I did this with the Copic the Copic alcohol markers for those of you who, that came in a little bit later. And, and those are great for blending. They, they blend really nicely. Now this isn't, this paper has a little trouble with some, some of the blending wasn't as ideal as I, I would like, but uh, it does depend on the paper and it does go through the back. And then I did a little bit of some metallic on his, on his little hands, because that's opaque. But anyway, so we'll, like I said, I'll, I'll color him when we do the coloring month. In the meantime, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and keep filling in all of my, my little connections until it's time for the show and tell, unless you guys want me to, you guys want me to do another project? I, I did think of something I could do. Or would you like me to just be quiet and work on this? You guys can mark in the chat if you don't want to. I'll look at the chat now. So vote if you want. There's probably a way I can offer a vote. But if you guys want to do I hear another project, OK. OK. All right. Okay, because you guys know what that looks like. And I did think of, because somebody was saying, oh, well, you know, what kind of things can you do? And anything where you have some things that cross out, cross, you know, any kind of filaments or anything that crosses over. So I had another thought of something and I'll I'll keep working on that on the side and then I'll post a picture. And I actually did start something. So you can use this is kind of back to the mandala. You can use um, your compass or you can use if you have stencils or you can just hand do it. Although I do recommend Another option is just to use round things in your that's that you have in your arsenal, which I do recommend in this case to do. Because I'm going to do kind of a, like a bouquet of flowers. And I'm going to start with a pencil just to give guides for the flowers. And now normally flowers are gonna go in all different directions. So some would be sort of oblong, but I'm just gonna assume that um, all the flowers sort of fold and face forward kind of like sunflowers. <laughs> so I'm just gonna make a variety of circles. Maybe I'll add some side views later, but I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some different sizes of circles. Move that chat. Okay. And I started without any tools and I went, you know, no, it's not gonna, <laughs> that's gonna be really difficult. So, 
in this case, I'm just going to make a big circle and then a center circle. And they can overlap. They don't have to be, and they can be different sizes. You can decide which one you want in the front and which one you want in the back later, or you can decide it when you're drawing them. Draw some random, random circles. Now you can draw the full circle, but I'm deciding as I go which ones I want in the front. So if I only want, if I want this to be behind the others, I can just draw part of the circle so I don't get confused. But if you want to draw the whole circle and decide later, you can just erase the part that you don't want. And I'll do an example of that here. Let's say I want... Oh, this one's not muted. Check if you're muted, um, unless you're trying to, you do want to say something. I'm hearing some background noise, so, and I'm still trying to figure out who. Is. I don't see anybody not muted, so. Okay, maybe, maybe you muted yourself, okay. So see how I made the full circle there? Then later on, I can just say, okay, I want, I want this one to be behind, so then I can erase the part of that circle that I don't want. That makes sense. I like to erase it, even though you, you could wait till the very end, but I like to erase it so I don't get confused, because I do. It's just same same thing that I talked about. Now, see, I just put a bunch of, the, of those, just like I said not to, those eraser things on my desk, I'll have to clean up later, because um, I wasn't thinking. So um, I like to erase it as soon as I don't need it because then I don't get confused. All right, so I'm just gonna add one more. Oh. Yeah, that one's gonna be good. Okay, so this is, Essentially, I don't know if you can see, just a bunch of round circles piled up together. And then I'm going to go ahead and use the smaller circles and roughly find the center of them. Actually, you know, I, I might even hand draw the center one. I'm just going to hand draw the center. So I'm just going to put a little circle in the center, roughly, of that. because I want to know where I'm starting from. And if you were here last month when we did the mandalas, and, and remember I did the flower mandalas, and that's basically what this is. I'm just using this the pencil as a guide to know where my petals are going to go. And then I'm going to use I'm doing that. From there, I can just draw the stems. And I want them to be kind of like a bundle. 
So maybe they'll be tied in the middle here. So I'm gonna just kind of mark roughly where my center, where I want it tied, the bundle. And then I'm just gonna bring the stems and they're roughly straightish, maybe a little bit of a turn. And I'm imagining it coming from the center here. So I'm just gonna trace the line in the air. And then once I get to the bottom of it, I'm gonna keep going down. So same with this one, it's coming down here. And then once I clear, This one. Hope oh, I hear some background noise again. I don't see anybody not muted, but oh, I keep hearing noise. Maybe I'm not seeing. Oh, you know what? I'm not seeing. Welcome, Mom. Really Okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So coming from this flower down, imagining it coming out here. You have to be completely straight. You don't want it to be, but you want it somewhat just looking like a stem. I got that one, that one, I got that one. And let's see. So, I think I got everybody. No, oh, maybe this one. And you could even make them stems by adding another line. So just follow. So plenty of lines to play around with there. Filling in those gaps, or not the gaps, filling in those cross sections. Okay, and then we can get to the petals. And in this case, um, let me just show a little tip we can do. To know where the petals go, we can do kind of like what we did with the mandalas, is you just create 
spokes. So just, and just we're gonna eyeball it. We're not gonna try to be exact, but you're gonna do a crosshair. So roughly a T through the center of the flower. It's not gonna be exact. And then you're gonna split, split, those, split those two up. Just kind of mark it where the center, you think the center is, just get an idea. Make another pie piece. These are just going to help to guide you where the petals go. So you can have a little bit of help. Doesn't have to be perfect. My center is not even perfect, but just. And the petals don't have to be exactly geometrically across from each other, but it just gives you a guide. So if you want to do it that way, you can. And then from the, I don't know if you guys can see, let me get closer. About as close as I can get. So, from the spokes of the wheel to this to this outer to the circle that you created, you can just draw a petal. So they're just acting as guides. And then in between there, you can create petals behind. But it helps you get those petals pointed towards the center because what you don't want is the petal to be angled awkwardly. So if I put a petal like this, for example, see how this isn't pointing towards the center, it's kind of angled. And so that gives a little bit of awkward because everything grows out from the center. So these spokes just help guide you so that all the petals even if they're not perfect, uh, that they're at least kind of pointing in the same direction. You don't want them to be perfect because the nature, they're not. They might be curled up. They might have been eaten a little bit by a bug. You can make it jagged on the edge if you want to make it look like it was eaten a little bit. Mess it up. Nature's messy. I had the hardest time with that when I was learning watercolor. I wanted to make everything symmetrical and, you know, and my teacher just kept saying, mess it up, Shauna. <laughs> Stop being such a perfectionist. Because, you know, I used to be a professional organizer, so I liked to organize things and I tried to do it in my art and that's not, it's not where you want to apply that skill. So I had to really work on relaxing and letting things be a little messy on the canvas. And it was really therapeutic, really helps with that. Let go of that perfectionism tendency, wanting everything to be in order. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of petals there in pencil. And I can start using my marker to draw them in. I want to use my line tip. This is an O1. Now the center part of this is going, I um first I'm going to think about what I want for that. Maybe I want Uh, 
Um, I think I'm going to make it kind of scalloped. So I'm just doing like these little scallopy petals and getting bigger and bigger, kind of like a sunflower. Imagining these are little sunflower seeds. I see my circle's not perfect, and that's okay. Just like the mandalas, when we finish those, all of those little imperfections got lost in the scheme of things, and they were no longer important. So, there we go. Okay. Now you do want to think about which petals in front. So what I like to do is make, go around and just make some petals that are going to be in front. And then because then the petal next to it then is going to be behind it. So I'm going to start at the edge of that one petal, bring it all the way down. And then I can start the next one behind it if I want. So just decide if you want the petal to completely be showing or maybe just tucked behind. Or a little bit of both. All right, and now I would go through and do all of the flowers. And they, they're different sizes. You can make them different, kind of different flowers, or you can do all the same ones. But um, before I go to the next step of the flower, I would then erase the guidelines. So I'm going to be really careful because I'm not going to do all of the flowers before I get to this because I'm not going to have time, but I want to show you at least one flower. So I'm just going to erase all of those guidelines and try to be careful not to erase my neighboring my neighboring guidelines. It's tricky to do things in different orders. <laughs> it's like for teaching, I have to adapt a little bit to make it work. And that's okay. I can adapt. I don't know, my because now I'm going to have to pull everything off my desk to clean that those crumbs from the when I was when I wiped it off onto my desk. That's why I don't like to do that. I really do like to have a little 
either a trash can handy or some kind of container because they're, they're a mess. They're, they make a mess. And they're not easy to wipe up because they're rubber, so they don't just easily wipe off. So, okay. And then that'll be something else we can color our coloring. The color map. Okay. So the next thing I like to do is give it a little bit more nature organic flavor. And one way to do that is just to add some, some lines. Some lines coming from the bottom up. And some coming down. And then you can even kind of add a little dots. Just give it some blemish so it doesn't look like this perfectly open petal. It just has some character. And as you go up the side of the petal, it's rounded. So follow the curve of the leaf around the sides. And then in the middle, it's a little bit straighter. And you can even create cracks in the petals. If you just at the top of the petal, make a little V, like a really small V. Let's see if I can get that. So see how I just basically created a little gap between the sides of the leaf or sides of the petal and then make it narrow as it comes down. And it just looks like there's a little crack in the in that leaf, in that petal. I keep calling it a leaf, I don't know. <laughs> Hear what I mean, not what I say. Uh. And this, you do wanna have a really, fine tip. I'm, this is a little thicker than I, I would probably use. I probably use my 005, this is 01, which is pretty fine. But you just want to kind of flick these lines. Maybe like I said, a little dots.
And then when you do the coloring, I'll probably do like a colored pencil, then you can even create more of the dimension with the shading. This just gives it a little bit of some character, gives it an organic feel as opposed to the cartoon feel, I call it, or you know, a child's coloring book. It's more of adult. <laughs> There, I'm just going to bring down the brightness so you guys can see the detail a little better. Hopefully that's better. coming up on our show and tell time. So perfect. I'm just kind of dusting almost like little this. Okay, so now you can see there's just a little bit more detail on the flower so that it just like I said, gives it a little bit of an organic feel to it rather than cartoon and then, yeah um, sorry I, I was just wondering would you always fill um do do that detail in marker you wouldn't leave any of that as pencil mark and just have it show faintly you can, you can do that um I I usually I like to do it in a, I, and I would say I'd probably use a finer marker as kind of the guides. And then I'd go with the pencil. I would go with the, because um, I, I want to highlight it with the pencil, but I like having the black there, but you can certainly do all of the shadowing and detail with the pencil. I just think you don't get as big of a contrast when you do it with the pencil. Um, and it's a little harder to get the fine lines that you're going to be able to get with the marker. If that yeah, I, I marker that fine. So I'm thinking mine is going to have too much of a contrast. Like it is going to look like a color. Right. right. You do definitely want a real fine. Like I said, I would probably use my 005, which is even smaller than this. Um, so for sure. Yeah, if you don't have a finer marker, you can just really get a sharp pencil and do it in the darkest contrast color that you're using, or you could even use black. Just be careful because the pencil will start to get dull. And what happens is they'll start off really sharp and you'll get detail. And then as you use it, it gets dull and, and people don't sharpen it enough. So then all of a sudden you get really thick lines. So just you could certainly get you know do some of the, that detail with it with your pencil okay thank you sure all right any other questions before i wrap up here and get to the show and tell thank you so much for watching this episode of healing art after hours you can download materials related to this topic including pdf notes of powerpoint presentations at creatingspacecoastal.com. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you found this content helpful, and join me for the next video here at my Creating Space Coastal channel, where I hope to inspire you to create space in your life for fun. Thank you.